to meet Charles Nevels, and I'm so honored that you decided uh, to interview with us. And thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Now I know you have four brothers, very uh, talented, very special family. You have Aaron. Aaron, Art, and Cyril, and we have one sister. Her name is Athelgra, and she was at it. She sings with the group called the Dixie Cups. Mm -hmm. So, now how did the whole idea to create this amazing band came together? Because you're all very talented. You play the saxophone. You have Aaron, who is an amazing singer. We saw you performing today, smashingly, amazingly. Everybody loved it. Well, I, it, as kids, I mean, music was everybody in the family played something or sang uh, as we were growing up, so we were all drawn to it just because it was around us. Now, how many years did you practice saxophone? I know since 12 you started playing. Yeah, well, I'm still practicing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, we were all, we had done stuff together over the years in different configurations, uh, and then we all went different ways in the 60s and, and it was in the 70s that we were asked to come back to record with my uncle who was uh, uh, had, was the leader of one of the Mardi Gras Indian groups mm -hmm. and uh, he asked us to come back and record some things with him, some of the traditional Mardi Gras Indian songs and we came, we all got together here in New Orleans to do that. And he reminded us at the time that we were doing, he said, man, this thing sounds so good. You know, your parents would, would have loved to have seen you guys get together and work as a family. And that's when we decided, okay, so we'll all come together and put together the Neville Brothers Band. Now, what's the, the key factor for the Neville Brothers Band? What is the message that you want to come across to many, many millions out there? Um, mainly just, uh, truth that music can uh, express what's in the person's heart and soul and it can touch the person hearing it and experiencing it and have them experience something of their inner self as well. And also it can show that um, how we can all be connected to the music. And a lot of the songs we, we wrote and recorded, some of them were messages of uh, peace and uh, love and tolerance and understanding. What is the most biggest challenge for you as a band to bring together? Because I know there's a lot of uh, situations in the world out there and there's a lot of disagreements and a lot of times people, they get together and they create something smashingly amazingly that help people and inspire them in the future. I mean, for us, I don't, there's no difficulty. We just, because what we do is just, uh, you know, we don't contrive the, the music like the stuff we did today, you know. Uh, there were basic arrangements to the songs, but nothing, you know, that, that uh, everybody knew how it was going to go through each song. We, when we start playing, we don't know. It's created as it's happening. And so that makes it really easy to do. And, uh, and also, when we're creating it, it requires that everyone on the stage is linked together, what, spiritually, emotionally. And uh, once what we send out goes to the people, it links everybody in the audience like that too, and then links them with us. Mm -hmm and that builds the energy that's in us and it goes out even bigger and stronger and then it comes back from the audience even bigger and stronger <laughs> until it fills the space. And uh, it's, I'm gonna put it, yeah, and it's like we feel that we're not actually doing it. Mm -hmm. It's that uh, it comes through us. Like a channel. Yes. yes. And I know you had a pretty rough uh, life behind you and it was not easy all the time and all, as well as for your brothers but what I've learned is you all are very positive people. Yes. What makes you so strong and what makes you so positive? Well we, we grew up in religious families mm -hmm. and uh, 
then as we, through our lives, we learned more about um, spiritual reality and about um, positive energy, positive behavior, mm -hmm. and um, giving. And, and you know, for me personally, I, I said, yeah, I was a bad person for a long time. Why, why would you say you were bad? <laughs> I was doing bad things. I was, you know, I wasn't wasn't uh, giving. I was more into taking, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, living my life like it was for my uh, satisfaction and not, you know. And not for you know if, if I had, if in order to satisfy something in me mm -hmm. it required I take something from someone else okay I would do that so but later as I lived through all of these things one of the things that uh, came to me was the understanding of you know some of the basic laws of life like the law of karma the law of cause and effect the law of you know that. What goes around comes around, as they say here. <laughs> That's true. And uh, and you know, and I was seeking something. I was seeking some kind of uh, oh change change in uh, some kind of yeah change transition from one thing into something something else. You know, I, I was wanting more to become a positive force rather than a negative force. And so during my seeking, I actually, you know, I've started, I studied, uh, the, uh, got connected with some Indian religions, uh, Eastern religions, then I started with the Tai Chi and the Qigong and the Chinese and, and Japanese. And how did that affect you? Well, all of it was, uh, well, first lear learning the, uh, the principles of the Eastern philosophies from the, the Indian uh, teacher uh, like kind of just opened my realization. I started meditation and that uh, gave me a different uh, view of reality. You know, doing, uh, look, being able to look within and, and then being able to recognize and see the connection of who and what I am to everything else. And then that was one step on the ladder to, you know, climbing out of the pit. Then now I got into the Tai Chi and the Qigong and the uh, uh, Buddhist teachings. And that was another big step to, uh, you know, uh, understand the teachings of the Buddha and understand like the Eightfold Path and how to live your life with the uh, number one aim being to be of service to the world and to the universe and to humanity and that that was the path to happiness rather than the path to having possessions having lots of things having like who was that that uh, Rajneesh that so-called guru who had 47 Rolls Royces oh. you know, and uh, all of the Rolexes up his arm <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, to learn that that wasn't the key. The key was to uh, um, find a connection to other people on a positive level. And that required being willing to, uh, uh, I'm going to put it, that was one of the things I learned first from Kripal Singh, who was a guy from India, about opening the heart chakra. Chakra. Yeah, and you know he explained how you know I was closed to protect myself, mm -hmm. and he explained well. So if you're closed to keep uh, negative energy out, well, you can't let any kind of energy out, you know, out from you, and you can't let the positive energy in. So that was one of the meditations we did was to uh, to learn to. Um, not overcome the well, yeah, overcome the fear of being hurt or being um, um, judged by someone else. Yeah, yeah. And so that was a you know one of the big steps that happened for me was getting uh, going through that and uh, and I realized like you know, playing the music it was like that because when we're playing it's like everything is 
exposed. You're giving. People. Yeah, yeah. But uh, when I was playing the, you know, the jazz, all the jazz musicians back in the fifties used to wear dark glasses. Did you really? So people couldn't see our eyes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Were you afraid though? Well, no, it was like that. That that. It, well, we're just showing too much of ourselves, and the, the the main thing of the fear was the fear of rejection. You know that okay, we're given, we're exposing everything about suppose we don't like it. About <laughs> our private life. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like you know. Uh, so, but but we had to do it, and we felt like well, okay, if we cover our eyes. Then they can't really see down inside, even though we're letting everything come out. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, uh, like I said, it was in, in increments and in small steps that grew and grew, and you know, gathered information and uh, understanding. And uh, got to w one of the things with the Tai Chi was learning to become centered and. Uh, so that no matter what was going on around me, I could be, I don't have to be affected by it. Mm -hmm. And especially if it's negative stuff and like uh, not to respond to negative, with negative, to be, you know, peaceful and, uh, and happy and positive. So that the energy around me is always good energy. and. If people come within my energy field, what they're going to feel that feel is the good. Welcome. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I don't worry about uh, being judged. That was another thing I always meant. Edgar Casey said yes. that uh, don't judge and don't compare. Don't compare yourself to anything else. Don't compare other people to, to other things. And don't judge anybody or anything, and don't judge yourself. You know, just learn, learn to live, and don't worry about other people judging you. Because what does it, what does it mean? What does it matter? Uh, uh, and one of the things Kapal Singh said about the uh, emotions, he said the most useless and uh, uh, really non-real emotion is uh, what, what do you put it? Uh, Embarrassment. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think people get embarrassed? Uh, it's, a, it's again, it's a reaction to being mm -hmm. judged, to the fear of being judged. And uh, oh, and another thing, when I right with the bands when I was younger, I remember we used to uh, have to put on a mask, a face, you know, put on a yeah, yeah, put on a yeah, so they couldn't see what I really am, because if they see me as a real am, they're not gonna. <laughs> I'm not good enough, and uh, uh, I found that uh, you know I talked to uh, uh, Jack Bruce who played with a group called Cream back in the '60s and '70s, and he was telling me that when they had got really famous, mm -hmm. he said every time he went on a stage, he was saying that he was thinking they're gonna find me out. They're gonna realize I'm not good enough to be up here in front of ten thousand people. <laughs> Did you have that feeling too? I used to have that, yeah, yeah. But that was the thing to get to uh, that I worked to get beyond was uh, worrying about what people think about me and what is about what I do, and that or if I'm putting out the best that I have, you know, uh, that's all I can do, and I can't uh, shape it to. Uh, fit some imaginary Ground. plane that I think this is what's going to please everybody. <laughs> you know? So, no, so the, again, it was a gradual process where I learned to go, I am who I am and what I am, and this is me. And, and I can say that through music, I can feel like today and all, all of the people there that felt strength, welcome, and also passion for life. Yes. Because yes. it's so positive. Would you tell me about how did you compose or how did this process comes together when you develop like a song, a melody? What comes to your mind? What inspires you? Uh, different things. Like sometimes the way, some of the songs we did, the way they would come together, like Aaron wrote poetry. Mm -hmm. And so he would bring one of his poems. 
and he have like maybe a basic melody for it, and we listen to it, and then we we'll just put some music to it, and uh, art might come up with a certain with a feeling with certain chords, and uh, you know certain kind of colors, and uh, and the chords, and Cyril might come up with a rhythm, and uh, I'd listen to it, and whatever it was, I'd, I'd let it suggest something to me to play, and that's how the songs come together. And then once once we hear the thing with everybody playing, we're like, oh yeah, that's cool, that's it. But then as we play it, it it changes and evolves. We might the first couple of times we play it, it might be that well we're gonna do it like this and it sounds great like this, but then I'm like, oh you know what? Wow, what was that you did on it that time? You know, it was really cool. So we'll do it like that until something else comes. So it, it it's constantly evolving and you know going around because sometimes it'll go back to what we did in the early days of doing the song. values to you and your brothers and your sister. What is the most important message that you carry through your life from your parents? Uh, I think the most important thing they told us was to uh, be true to yourself and uh, and to live, you know, according to the the, the teachings that we had learned from the, the, the different religions. My, my, uh, mother's family was Catholic, my father's family was Methodist or something, and we had relatives who were Baptists, and who were, so we went to all the churches, sang in the choirs, and, you know, went to Bible classes, and, you know, studied in you know, the Catholic schools. So, you know, we learned all of these, uh, these teachings, mm -hmm. uh, but, but they were all the Christian teachings. And, uh, but the main thing was that, uh, you know, the, you know, truth, was uh, a central theme through all of it that, you know, uh, uh, being for real mm -hmm. is what we called it. And that was like, you know, living, living the truth. Not, even though for, for years we did pretend we were something other than what we were. You know, I, I just recently did an interview up in Massachusetts and one of the, the people asked me, I was doing a workshop at the school and one of the questions was about being in prison well, how did you survive in that, that environment? Oh, I just pretended that I was bad, <laughs> like the other girls. Well, was that the reaction you got back? Did they really think you were tough? Yeah, yeah. So it's like projection, what you thought. Yeah, and, and but the thing is, as I got to know people in our apartment, they were all, a lot of them were doing <laughs> the same thing. And I know it was very hard for you. It was very hard labor as well. Yeah, but uh, that was... I mean, I had been working hard, you know, all, all, most of my life anyway, so that was just, uh, you know, part of the price I was paying for the life I had been living. Uh, and, but it was, there was the hard labor for a while, but then I got the job as a music teacher. It's amazing, where? <laughs> <And then, laughs> and then it was really great, because I could practice all day, and I, you know, it was nothing music, I write arrangements for the bands, put on, uh, produce shows for the, for the inmates at different at different holidays, and we also did shows for the free people. <laughs> and our band even played for the prom for the St. Francisville High School one year Here because there was no band to play their prom, so they come get the prison band. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's your most memorable concert so far? Oh, uh, most memorable one. There's many of them that were memorable, but but uh, one was. Uh, when we did some concerts with the Grateful Dead. How was that? Those were, those were really, really different from anything else, really wonderful, because the, uh, the atmosphere and the energy at those concerts, it was the hippies and they were all tripping. Mm -hmm. And so there was that energy from, from that, 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 uh, that uh, the LSD thing, whatever, whatever the energy was that was in the audience was really strong and it was so the, it affected the music. Was it aggressive? Uh, with that no. same energy and hurt the other person, although you can, 
your aim is to just maintain the balance and keep yourself from becoming unbalanced and becoming in a different state. And so you learn to do these things to, to uh, how to slide the aggression aside rather than confront it head on. But you learn things that, well, if it comes to that, that, you know, there's the things that you do uh, where you could show the person, well, stop because I can't hurt you. You know, but I, I won't. I'll just push you aside. But then if it continues, then you can actually lock the, the joints so that the person can't move and hold them until the bullets come or something or, 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 dis or incapacitate them long enough for you to get away from them. And so, but the main thing was you don't want to, you don't learn this because you want to fight. You, know, you don't want to fight. <laughs> Positive. Yeah, yeah. Now, what is your favorite food? My favorite food? Yes. Uh, well, aside from the New Orleans food, aside from the grits and the, <laughs> 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 and the fried catfish, uh -huh. the sushi. The sushi. Yeah. What's your favorite time of the day? Uh, I don't I don't know. What's the holiday? Do you have a favorite holiday? Let's see, which one would I say would be in my favorite? Oh, because of the kids, Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how, how do you usually celebrate Christmas at home? Uh, well, we have a Christmas tree. Do you have other brothers come in, or how does it, like, well, with the family? Well, when we were here, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, everybody would, would, would come in. We visit each other. We do. We still do that, visit each other. Uh, and now we visit each other online. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, like, the most common way of communicating? Yeah. Do you yeah. miss that time when you were small? Yes, yes, and still, you know, uh, but like at home we have with, with Khalif and Talon and my wife and then uh, her family lives near, so we all get together and, uh, you know, celebrate Christmas, have some the special food for Christmas. And they look, especially Talon, looks forward to Christmas morning. We can go down and open <laughs> the presents. <laughs> and now the last question we always ask, what are your three wishes? Uh, you know, uh, that's what that the Baroness asked all those jazz musicians. <laughs> those are three last ones, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, if I could be granted three wishes, one would be to be able to continue to spread positive energy mm -hmm. and happiness to the people of the world. Uh, and next would be that uh, my younger kids get connected to the positive energy and be able to grow into really... Uh, fully rounded human beings. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third one would be that they're able to have enough money to survive. To have like universe provide them. Yes. In a way. And Charles, I thank you so much and uh, we are so blessed to have you with us. All right, thank you. And get your message across. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>